Good evening and welcome. It's Monday Night Football. Kusowetu TV, Kamalamgu, Kamzambata. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, before I go any further, there's that hashtag MNF on Soweto TV. Use that one to converse with us because we're discussing everything from Banyana Banyana to Bafana Bafana to what's happening in the ABC Mutsipe League and, of course, what's happening with our under-23s. And to help me do that, I have my esteemed panel and I will start with award-winning journalist uh, Veli Lemyandu. Thank you so much for joining us, Veli. And then right next to him is the Soka Latuma journalist that everyone loves on Twitter, Super Journo, everyone's fave. John T. Mark also joins us from um, The Citizen. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Let's start where everyone would expect us to start. And of course, that's with Bafana Bafana. But before we go any further into the actual games, Obviously, there was a bit of a blackout as far as today's game was concerned. We saw the one uh, uh, at the end of last week, but, mm. you know, some people are looking at the SABC wondering, hey, man, why aren't you guys showing us this game, even though it was an away game, in inverted mm. commas, for us. What did Gary mm. Rathbone, who's uh, the GM of SABC Sport, have to say on the matter, John T? Yeah, I mean, he said that the, basically the demands, uh, the cost of the game was too much for the SABC, who mm. are at the moment going through a Section 189 retrenchment um, at the company. So you can sort of understand that they don't want to pay. They don't want to be seen to be paying a huge it's amount for a amounts, game yeah. when they are laying off employees. So um, there's, a, there's understanding. There's also not the first time the SABC haven't paid for a, an away game, mm -hmm. so to speak. And the fact that it was here is almost incidental in the sense that the rights aren't owned by the South African Football Association. So mm -hmm. they can't. Well, they can't just just show the game, so it was a it was a tricky situation for the SABC, and I have some sympathy with them. And apparently, they were also offered um, the Sudan away game and this game as a package, and it at an, at an also at a rate that was just way too high. Mm. So they just didn't want to pay, um, and ultimately, they don't show the game if you don't pay. They paid for the radio rights, so they had exclusive radio rights um, here, and they 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 broadcast the game on their radio stations. Um, but on television, uh, those of us lucky enough to have a strong enough streaming facility could watch it via CAF TV. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was no broadcast, unfortunately, for the SABC. And I think it's going to be an ongoing problem. Um, I think Valide touched on it earlier in conversation that, the, that since the deal with Lager, Lager there, the mm. French sports mm. company, collapsed, mm. um, there, there's been a problem for CAF in terms of these rights and in terms of especially the away games, um, uh, it, it does seem like too much money is being asked and it needs to somehow be controlled um, and it doesn't reflect very well on the leadership at, at CAF in my opinion. Okay, well let's hope it gets resolved before we get to the next round of qualifiers in March 2021. Back to the matter at hand, the game itself, six points, we're sitting second in Group C. Um, you know, some were doubting whether we'd be able to, but we spoke about how this game, these two legs in our backyard, we had to get six points. As to how we went about it, Mazona, <laughs> what's your take? Yeah, look, <coughs> I mean, those who saw today's game would again say unconvincing. Um, but if you didn't and you see the scoreline 4-2, mm. you think clinical, you know, Bafana playing minnows, but it wasn't it wasn't as easy. I mean, right. I think the, th the thing to note is that Bafana scored those last two goals. I mean, they were trailing, you know, and then they went 2-1 and mm. then it was 2-2 and then they scored those last two goals when uh, Sao Tome had, had a man sent off, a right. centre-back sent off. So you've got to put that into perspective. But at the end of the day, nobody really, really cares, you know, in terms of trying to get there. I mean, if um, unless Sudan cause an upset against Ghana tomorrow, mm. Bafana will need just a point from the last two games against Ghana and, and, and Sudan, Sudan yeah. you know. Um, and that's pretty much given that it's a 24-team tournament now and two from each of the 12 groups. Mm. I think we, you, you, it's safe to say we've got one foot in the, in the, in the tournament proper, which has now been moved to January 2022. So, and, and hopefully during that time, We'll have a new CAF president, we'll have a new CAF executive, and they can sort out this mess with the broadcast uh, deal so yeah. we can actually see some football. Because during the, you know, sorry, I'm, I've, I've gone, I've gone, I've off ramped, but <laughs> it's, it's upsetting that yeah. we, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, these things annoy me, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Let's hope by March it gets sorted out. Yeah. Stavage, the Malefinseki experiment continues. Um, you know, he's doing what his 
job is, and that's, of course, to get points on the board. Um, but in terms of the mix, the way he starts the games, the players he starts with to those he brings in later, what do you make of the tactical decisions? Because I know you watch it with that keen eye. Yeah, firstly, I think, uh, firstly, I have to congratulate him. Mm -hmm. um, so now four matches, four official matches for him, okay. uh, three wins, one loss. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where the focus um, is. Um, nine points from a possible 12. Um, this has also been a very tough week. Mm -hmm. In fact, a very tough international week uh, in, uh, in African football. Right. Uh, today, uh, Uganda, they were looking for three points to qualify. They lost to South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday, Comoros uh, beat Kenya 2-1. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, they've collected four points from a possible six against Kenya. They are topping their group in a group that also has got Egypt and Togo as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, you also have um, Botswana today mm -hmm. um, beating uh, Zambia. You know, um, I can give you all these teams. Yeah. You know, uh, gone are the days in African football where you look at the rankings and you say because the team is ranked 158th, mm. um, you deserve to win, you know. So the way we we came back um, against uh, South Tome and Principe, <laughs> I think uh, maybe thanks to COVID, we didn't go to South Tome and Principe. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not sure if we could have came back there. Yeah. Um, the, the way w w w we're playing. And look, for me, um, when it comes to Bafana, um, there's still <coughs> an up. You, I, I'm unhappy with how we considered goals today. Yeah. You know, um, when I look at them and I look at our team, um, we ought to plan better uh, when it comes to set plays, when mm -hmm. it comes to aerial balls. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and and if you look at how they scored today, yeah. um, it, it's an area before where we hardly considered goal in, mm -hmm. in that fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, th that's number one. But also, uh, I, I I think now it also opens some people's minds, you know. Um, just because a player is good locally yeah. and is on form, doesn't, yeah. doesn't transform that. Yeah. International football is a different animal altogether, sure. yeah. you know. And those are the things we're learning. What are you referring to then? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, it, when it comes to some combinations, you can yeah. see there at centre back, yeah. you know. Um, maybe you can also see that we still need some solidifying, um, even on the wings as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in the wing backs mm -hmm. or in the, in the full backs, because uh, Koshin Saki prefers, he doesn't prefer full backs, he prefers wing backs, right. you know? So um, maybe th these are some of the things that we're still in. And, and also, I, I, I feel that the, the acceleration of players mm -hmm. um, who are coming from the under 23, yeah. I would have loved to see Luda Singh getting more time, right. uh, more game time. Yeah. Um, for me, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but those are the things that you are going to consider uh, going forward. First thing that comes to mind when we talk about the qualifiers mm. is to secure the points. Sure. You know, and now we've got the six points, and we can sit and wait uh, for the next uh, international week uh, in March next year, and uh, hopefully by that time we'll only be needing this one point. No, for sure. I mean, obviously for the coach, it's um. He's been having this pressure as far as some of the selection choices. Manyama once again comes into the spotlight yeah. as to whether this experiment of uh, playing him as a number nine is, you know, something that is going to be fruitful for the team. Especially when you consider that maybe on the bench there are players who can fill that yeah. position a bit better. What have you made so far of that experiment? <coughs> I'm going to start with you, Mazola, and then John T. I want to get your thoughts. The, the whole Manyama thing is confusing because yeah. now it's, this is the third coach that's doing that national yeah. team level. You have his, at, at his club, you had Ernst playing him as a deep-lying midfielder right. or just behind the striker. And now Gavin Hunt's been playing him on the wing. There have been question marks about that. Then now he gets to the national team coaching take. He plays him as a number nine. Mm. You know, I know it's all these positions that he's played before, you know, especially, you know, when he was younger, his IX days where he was a lot quicker. But it's not the one that he's good at. Ever, you know, but, you know, I, I, I thought, obviously, where Ernst played him last year, he, he proved to, to, to be a, a key player for, for, for Chiefs and even went up for nomination for, you know, individual awards in the APSA Premiership. Oh, yeah, number that. 10. <coughs> I mean, I think, especially when he was playing him as a deep-lying midfielder. Yeah. You know, because remember, he was on set pieces a lot as well. I think from that position, that's how he got to be among the individual awards at mm. the end of the season, mm. you know. And now, Gavin, from the games that I've seen, I think Gavin's been trying him out as, as, as a winger, even though he's not as quick. 
now, as I'm saying, Coach Ntsek is playing him as a number nine. That can confuse a player as well. I know when you're a player, you step up to the game, you yeah, step up to the you, play. You to play say, where the coach asks you to if play. If the coach says, play here, play there, mm. you come in and you do the job. Mm. But but for me, when you have Chabi Sokutumela on the bench, you've got Luda saying, okay, the first game, Kermit was not available, mm. but he was available today. Mm. And when he did come on, you could see the threat, you know, the, the, the threat that he posed, especially, mm. you know, uh, peeling off, you know, uh, opening up you know, running off of the shoulder to create mm -hmm. spaces for, 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 for Dean and Bongani to play him on. Mm -hmm. I think that it has to be looked at again, you know. Obviously, Bradley Krobla, a no-brainer. When he's available, he will be the, 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 the leading man. Yeah. Motiba. You know, Lebu Motiba, when yeah. he's available, obviously, he's also nursing an injury. So you've got players that can come in there, but I think, I think Velile mentioned it earlier. I think that the, the, the coach had enough ammunition or... Yes, Manyama is the more experienced of of of, 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 bench, of yeah. who, whoever was on the bench. Mm. But I think in that type of setting, especially for a lesser team, so to speak, I know you know once we played them, it wasn't as easy as it looked on paper. But I think Kutumela and Luda Singh and mm. Kermit would have been the preferred starters. But you know the coach. You know, if, you know, he knows best, I suppose. <laughs> well, he's over the two legs, John T. And the fact that he's won, people aren't going to ask as many questions. And maybe in the absence of those other players, he's had an opportunity to cast his eye because, once again, it's an opportunity to kind of figure out what the best team is and make do with what you have when players are injured. So you, 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 it's a good mix and a problem to think, have if they deliver on the results. Yeah, I do think, look, got the six point. Yeah, great. I do think there are questions that need to be asked <laughs> because we're playing Sao Tome and I know there's no easy games in Africa anymore, it's a bit of a cliche, but it, there aren't. Sao Tome, though, I mean, and we had the added advantage of playing twice at home effectively. Mm -hmm. um, once, I think we could have been a bit more impressive. I can add especially, you that part of playing especially in, Especially in the second game. Yeah. Um, because for 40 minutes we were dreadful today. I was really worried at mm. that point. I mean, some of the defending, really, they touched on it. Near post corner, cap the South Tome captain heads in. Yeah. About 10 minutes later, exactly the same thing happened. Mm. And this time he headed it wide. Mm. That could be 2 0 down. Sure. Because of one thing, and you've got to credit South Tome tactically. They obviously saw there was a weakness there. Mm. Even, this, even the um, South Tome second goal, ball mm. to the back post, nobody really picking up the yeah. man, heads in. Um, it was weak. For me, and against better teams, you're going to be exposed. Um, in in in, if we get to the Afcon finals, you know, even Sudan and Ghana, we've got to get, still got to get that point. Mm. Um, I'm a bit more concerned, maybe, <laughs> about about the way we played in in particularly today. Um, we should have, I think, grabbed the game a bit more by the throat. Mm. Um, but again, we came back. Again, we've got the quality of Zwane and Tao to to. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the individual qualities that will get you through some games. Sure. So they, they were able to do it today. Um, I was confused by Manyama, um, just because he's a brilliant player, but he's not in any form. Mm -hmm. I was a bit confused by the selection of him. <laughs> Annoy Chiefs fans here, but I was totally baffled by the selection of Itumal and Kune in the squad. Don't tell me he's there for experience. I mean, what is he? <laughs> why is he there? He shouldn't have been there. He influences he's the in no team. form. No. He influences the so dressing room. He's a character in the dressing room. You don't pick room. players who have no form. He's a figure um, in the dressing room. I, 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 yeah. I disagree I, when I, it comes <laughs> to the issue of form. Um, because sometimes you, you have players who are on form and they, they don't have that experience. Mm. And they get there and that stage is too big for them. Mm. You know? Mm. Uh, but this is, not, this is not to say to, prot to protect uh, Kure's yeah. um, selection. selection. Mm. Manyama today, had that ball went in, hit the post, we'll be talking like this about him. But he didn't, so we are. Talking. Look, it was, no, no, you no, mean no, that he was like, <laughs> he, he tried. You mean that no, no, today, today, I the felt he was better than in the first game. No, that's true, you know? yeah. that's true, but, I, I but, will back you yes, on that. Yes, he yeah. was better than in the first game, yeah. but, but, still, yeah. but still, I wouldn't have started him hmm. ahead of the other strikers. I hear you. You understand? Yeah. Uh, because I feel that up front, especially when you're playing one striker at the top, you are looking for mobility. You know, and I don't think he's got more of that. Right. You know, yeah. um, even the runs, you know, yeah. the kind of run that you expect from a striker. For sure. You know, yes, he's played that role. If you remember when 
got the player of the season, mm. top goal scorer uh, for Cape Town City. Mm. But um, look, sometimes you have to accept for that sure. coaches have their preferences in terms of how they want to do things. Mm -hmm. And even in this situation, I think that's um, what Coach Nseki went for. Well, there we go. I mean, he was literally a post away from getting on the score sheet. So these combinations seem a bit cryptic at first, but maybe can work out in certain scenarios. We're going to carry on with Monday Night Football on Soweto TV after this. I think if I look back at all the Kosafa since 2017, we had 10 new players back then, um, got their first medals. Um, 2018, we had new players, got their first medal, same with 2019, now with 2020. And I say to the players all the time, go out and make your mark, go out and be remembered. Go out and raise your hand. And now we have a, we have a headache, but we have a good headache because it's made our core group bigger. Um, and, you know, the celebration for the players, I think it will go on and on because this is something that you will never forget. Um, your first medal, um, this is something, this opportunity where you dream of playing for the national team and now you haven't only played but you've got a gold medal. Uh, and I think, you know, if they really look back at, at what they've achieved, um, you know, it's a moment to remember. 25 days in camp to prepare after being out for seven months. You know, I have to applaud the players. Um, they're the key role players here. Um, you know, they've put in the work, um, pushed by the fitness trainer, along with the technical team, we really, really worked hard. You know, the analysts were spot on with all the games. Um, the way we analyzed the team, she was spot on. Uh, stuck to the game plan. Today, we stuck to the game plan half and half. Um, but when we did and moved the ball around, we created a lot of opportunities. The assistant coach, fantastic. You know, the whole, I can mention each and every one um, in, our, in our support group, because we're a team, you know, we're a team. And the medical team made sure that we had almost 100% except for pride. We got injured at training, you know, almost 100% um, uh, players available. And uh, it was just fantastic. So it came down to this particular moment. And it was a challenge for them now. We got to the final. Now go out and enjoy it. You know, go out and enjoy it and, and, and be remembered. There you have it, a fourth consecutive Kasafa Championship for the women's team under the stewardship of uh, Des Ellis. And I mean, you can hear from her, it's a collective effort. Everyone's bought in to this project. Stavej, did you feel this when you were there? I mean, you were in PE uh, a little bit last week. Did you get the sense that this is a, a group that knows what their purpose is and they just go out there and they do the damage on the field? Yeah, look, I had a sit down with the coach mm. uh, just a day before the semifinals. Um, and it was very interesting at the time because uh, the Chawinga sisters, uh, they were wrecking havoc. Um, you know, you have two sisters, um, uh, Tabita um, Tamwa. and, and Tamwa, yeah. you know. Uh, Tamwa, um, her team, they both play in China. Mm. Uh, Tamwa's team uh, won the championship uh, in China. Uh, Tabita came very close. Mm. Uh, but Tabita, you know, despite the fact that she's, uh, she's playing for Malawi, for me, she's the best women footballer in Africa currently. Mm. Um, she earns close to 200,000 rands a month mm. um, in, in, in China, and she owns a team um, in, 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 in Malawi as right. well, and paying the coaches there. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Proper things. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, hey, this, the, this team is dangerous. Mm. And, you know, you could see uh, the intensity of their game, um, they were unbeaten mm. um, up until we, 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 we met them. But I, I felt when they lost their goalkeeper through a red card, mm. then that's where the opportunity came for us. Right. But we struggled in the first half, mm. even with the one player advantage that mm. we had, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but we came back strongly in, in the second half. I think what Coach um, Des and also um, uh, uh, Coach Tina, mm. um, have done very well um, because they didn't have their foreign contingent. Mm -hmm. um, so they brought a very young team. Yeah. Uh, from the team that won this championship last year, they were minus those nine players mm -hmm. because they are all playing overseas now. Sure. And they brought this team um, of um, Gabriel Solgado. Um, they had uh, Hilda Machaya. Machaya, you know, mm -hmm. she was one of the top goal scorers um, in, 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 in the inaugural Safa National Women's League, scored right. over 30 goals. Yeah. You know, she's, she was the player of the tournament. She scored a hat trick um, in, in, in the semi final. Right. And you also had um, a young girl, you know, Esbulelo Holweni, 
Um, she ended as a top goal scorer, I think eight goals um, in, the, in, 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 in the tournament. She scored the mm. first goal uh, in the final. She was part of that under-17 um, World Cup squad, right. you know. So they were young players um, and they were gelling together, you know. So I think for me, this is, because I was scared of Malawi. Yeah. But once they went past Malawi, then <coughs> we were all saying it's time for the sweet revenge because uh, the Mars, this yeah. uh, Botswana team, yeah knocked us out right. of the Olympic qualifiers, yes. you know? So it was time for sweet revenge and how sweet it was uh, to do it at the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. <clears throat> Not for sure, but I mean, the beauty of it all is that we have this conveyor belt now, it would seem, you know, from the last one, the girls there got opportunities to go overseas and you could probably see the same thing happening for some of the members of this team, but it's heartening because this is what we always say that, you know, to have international players for the big tournaments, but yeah. then still have local based players who are capable in getting you a whole trophy. Yeah, and I think what I like about Coach Des is obviously one of us mm. and <clears throat> she's able, she knows where to, to widen the pool. She knows where to go and get the gems, you yeah. know. If, if we keep making it to major tournaments as well, it's an opportunity to, to, to give others uh, the chance to play abroad, you know, to do what Tim B and, 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 and Rafilwe and them are doing mm. uh, abroad, whether it's China, whether it's Italy or, you know, Bulgaria or Hungary, wherever, right. you know, to be able to also pocket uh, the kind of figures that are being thrown around uh, abroad. So, I, and I, <coughs> I've complete belief that coach Co coach Des is, is the person to do that obviously when when she took over and um, um, you know her, her, her predecessor yeah. had, had left yeah. um, to go back Vera to Holland, Holland yeah. Vera Powell go went back to Holland there were doubts mm. ah, why Des and whatever but I mean you could see even now after the hammering that they've been giving the teams mm. she's speaking as if there's so much work still to be done like ah it was narrow margins and, yeah. and it was like yeah. tennis scores you right, know? Um, right. but she you know the, the job got done so i think lo long may it continue i think we want to see more more of those yeah. Yeah, especially the fa also has to come on board you know because in the build up to this tournament drama over kids and whatever yeah and so yeah that was gonna be my next point yeah, John, yeah. If, uh, if this fa you know, come through and, uh, you know, the biggest supporters of women football we've ever seen and they add to that reputation, uh, what can this team achieve? It just, it seems like the sky is the limit. Well, yeah, I mean, they like to always, it seems like an, at the end of every press statement from the president, he, he likes to note what he's done for women's football or right. what staff have, but I mean, if they can't get the kits right, <laughs> it's really not a very good beginning. It started with the Bufana kit, with the training kits and the yeah. friendlies. Yeah. It's moved on there. It was also happened with the under 23s now, I believe, when they played Saudi Arabia. So it's just a bit of a chaotic situation with, with you know, Lecoq sportive signing this deal, but there doesn't seem to have been much organisation behind it. In fact, before the, the friendly kits, it started with that appallingly. <laughs> Made a uh, appalling, video. appalling launch video, yeah. yes, which, uh, which really, <laughs> I don't think there's much controversy in saying it was a shocker. Yeah, no, it was a shocker. Yeah, yeah, I think for me, shocker. what is also yeah. now, unfortunately, mad this um, a success of Banyana Banyana yeah. mm -hmm. um, is the fact that the team, uh, the players will not be paid yeah. any bonuses, yeah. um, you know, mm. uh, which for me, I feel it's sad mm. because uh, uh, Kosafa pays money, mm, you understand? Sure. Sure. Um, Kosafa, the last time I checked, I think it was half a million, right? Yeah. You know? Where is it mm -hmm. going? Um, Into the so coffers. Yes, you know? <laughs> so if, if you are going to say, you know, this Botswana team that we were playing, uh, the, the Botswana team were playing in the final, for winning the semi final, mm. because this was also their maiden final yeah. that they were playing, they got 250,000 pula, hmm. which translates to close to 380,000 rands, you know? And the players are sharing that amount. And yeah. now you are saying our girls must get nothing, you understand? You know, but and, 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 and they're the biggest supporters of women football. Exactly, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> no, I don't understand disgrace. because Safa not it long ago disgrace. they were saying, uh. um, they, they were saying um, they are expecting to make a surplus of sixty million rands. Mm. That's like even on the Bafana side, they mm. want to scrap the bonuses. Yeah. you know, mm. uh, for Bafana players. And now you are telling me that um, these boys must fly all the way from Europe to come and and, play for and just honor the fixture. Yeah. You understand? Uh, yes, I know that it's an honor and you've got sure. a special cap. No, but you've got but to, yeah. but you sweeten the deal yeah, you a little bit. You understand? Yeah, so, sure. uh, no, I, I think that the suits need to treat us better. I tend to agree with you. 
Because the thing is, you know, they'll speak about what they've done for women's football, but let's be honest, what has women's football done for them? It's made them relevant. It's put them in a position to say, you're the people who oversee a strong Banyana Banyana side, yet you can't meet the team more than halfway. I mean, it's like halfway is not even Chip the case. Polo, yeah. for winning against Botswana last week, yeah. each player we had, each player was getting 5,000 USD. Yeah. You understand? Oh. I told you now about what Botswana is getting. Yeah, for sure. And this country, South Africa, country, South Africa is not just any country on not the continent, sure. especially in the Southern African region mm. and in the Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. We must live by example. Man. With a land of plenty, and they need to do better. But let's hope that they do. Before we go to the break, quickly touching on uh, the SA uh, under-23s. They play again tomorrow, but they lost 3-2 uh, with Bagri Lakai and Zakele Lapaza getting the score, um, the, getting on the score sheet. I guess, you know, in, in, in what it is, John T, which is preparation for the games next year, mm -hmm. it's okay. we got to play tough competition, yeah, and maybe tomorrow I mean, we get a result. Yeah, it's preparation. We talk about the six points being the important thing for Bofana now. Yeah. Doing well at the Olympics is the important thing. Qualifying for the Olympics was the important thing. These friendlies are preparation. The results are largely... Um, la I mean, they can improve confidence, but yeah. they're largely irrelevant. As long as the coach gets to see what he wants to see, mm. it's good to see informed players like Lakai and Lepasa on the score sheet. For sure. You know, I think that, that it's fine. You know, we, don't, we, we, can't, we don't read too much into these results. Um, it'd be good for them to get something out of the game tomorrow, but yeah. again, if they lose, they lose. As long as they perform... When it matters in Tokyo, hopefully, then pending the coronavirus not next for sure. year. Yeah. Let's see. Let's great. see. I mean, but some of the names that started, you have the likes of Ngobo, Lepasa, um, Kuma, and Weber, you know, playing for DSCB Premiership teams and going, using that experience. What, what do you think? Are they bringing experience or are they learning from these encounters? Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Obviously, the, the coach now needs to... He needs to experiment to mm. some degree, you know, because mm. he's also got a decision to make about over 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 age players, um, you know, that he, he he potentially will take to to the Olympic Games. Yeah. And I mean, initially he had obviously named a squad of um, I think it was what 71, 68, I can't like, like a, a, a big number. Yeah. Of of, of 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 players that included a lot of over age players, you know, um, and obviously that didn't happen at at the time mm. because of of COVID nineteen, but. You know he's he's got a big headache because there are so many young talented mm. uh, players. A lot of them breaking into the senior teams in the in the in, in the top flight. A lot of them also showing what they can do abroad. You sure. Know? Um, same way we've been discussing Banyana Banyana players taking the opportunity to play on the world stage even 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 higher. There are some young uh, under twenty three players who've done that. Who've yeah. gone to overseas based clubs. So and and there there will be a lot of focus on the coach if he leaves out some of the European contingent to pick, you know, PSL players and they get there, they didn't we know what happened with Tabo Sino. Yeah. He went to a World Cup. The majority of his squad, the ones that he was picking in the first a team were players in the PSL when he had players playing for Leicester City and mm -hmm. whatever you think mm -hmm. the quality is better, you sure. know. Uh, but you know, the coach knows best, but the you know, <laughs> you fall by your sword, you know, so to speak. So the same will, will happen to, to, to David as well. There'll yeah. be a lot of scrutiny. There'll sure. be a lot of people. There'll be a lot of Asians that try to influence the situation there. That's the word. So, so, <laughs> so let, let, Keyword, let, let yeah, so let's see. Yeah, what did Tabeza say a couple of weeks ago? The power of Asians. The I'm power of you. Asians. We're going to find out. We find out <laughs> so every we, single we, turn. When it's time to pick this Olympic squad, we'll find we'll out the see. power of Asians. But let's talk about that overage player scenarios, Davidge. What is the criteria for picking someone like that? We've already spoken about how the Kunas of this world, as much as they go into the dressing room to help, don't help. So what do you pick <laughs> and what are you looking for when you pick an overage player? Yeah, I think when they go for an overage player, they mm. look for the troublesome areas, yeah. Yeah. Um, which they can't find in that age group. Right. You know, um, if they feel that um, they are struggling at center back, um, they will consider maybe going for Tyson, mm. um, or if they feel that uh, maybe with goalkeeping, which I re I really don't think goalkeeping is a, is an issue. Yeah, with, I know for um, sure. With, with, well with, 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 with that team, so so yeah, that, that, that's 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 what they so will no consider. Uh, no, no, no. Maybe <laughs> um, and also, do you do you do you really want to think about Pesitao when you've got Luther Singh, for yeah. sure. you've got Lyle Foster as well, yeah. you've got Zakele Lipasa as well. Uh, so, so that that's the issue, you know. Yeah. And and uh, and yes, this issue of overseas based. You see, even if you play overseas, mm. a player selects himself. 
mm. right. a training. Yes. If you're good enough, you will be there. Yeah. For sure. But just because you're overseas... It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, uh, sure. Sometimes. No, yeah, you know, you know, not all the time. Yeah, no, yeah, no, not all the time. No, for sure. Because, because the level is also important. Yeah. But and what you've been doing. If, if you're good enough, you must be in the top league. Okay. Well, there we go. Hopefully he will be spoiled for choice as you are here. As far as talking points, remember to use that hashtag of MNF on Soweto TV. We take a short little break after which we carry on with more. Welcome back, you're on uh, Soweto TV, and it is Monday Night Football as we congratulate Ipizana Pondo Chiefs. They are making it to the next rung of soccering success, and that's, of course, the Glad Africa Championship. But they will not be alone. The Pretoria Kalis will also be joining them. So, ruptions, movement, I mean, we've not seen the league really get started. They only kick off, like, early December. But as far as getting this tied up, Stavec, I guess it's a good thing when Safa look at the situation and say to themselves, okay, we need to get these things to a final conclusion, and they have, and we have two new competitors. One close to your heart, and Wabo Pume Eastern King. Yeah, but they're struggling to find a suitable pitch, and now they could even go as far as playing outside our province, huh. uh, because as much as they're in the Eastern Cape, Epizana, Gom Trumpe, Mbae, in the Langaleshi, you know, uh, that's, oh, so yeah. that's the Mbondo <laughs> language for you. Oh, there you we yeah. Um, Education. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they are closer to Durban. In fact, even teams that are going to play them mm. will have to fly to Durban um, and then go to, uh, to, to Mbizana because it's closer to that side. Oh, wow, okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And it's three hours away from um, Tata. Right. But I think uh, this is a very good thing uh, because Eastern Cape before this, didn't mm. have a team mm. um, in the Great Africa Championship. So it's good that the province um, has got a team. Let, 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 let me give you something mm. um, and how difficult it is for this team. When this team plays away to, to PE, mm. against a team in PE, mm. they travel close to 1,700 kilometers. Mm. You understand? Uh, uh, that's a return trip, just mm. for one weekend. Wow. You know? And there are five teams in Port Elizabeth. Mm. So it means that this team does, does that trip, five that times a season. That trip, yeah. uh, the th a trip to East London, you just have to minus uh, maybe 400 kilometers from what I gave you. Mm. You understand? Mm. And there's also more than three teams in East London. So that's how difficult it is in that right. province. Right. Uh, and this is a team that has gone through all these things um, to, 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 to be in this situation. But I think credit should also go to the coach at Topo mm -hmm. he's a former goalkeeper at uh, Free State Stars, yeah. Chippa United, Santos, and also Super Sport United. Yes. Um, he retired at Chippa, obviously, in 2015. Uh, last year, mm. uh, he went to the playoffs, he was not successful, mm. um, with Tornado FC, mm. and now defunct Tornado FC. Mm. Uh, and also, he took them to the last 32 of the Nelvin Cup as well. So, it's good to see him uh, with another Eastern Cape team. Yeah. Um, making this achievement or at only age 41. Uh, it's got a very bright future as a coach. You saw sure. how they played sure. um, and beaten even in, 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 in these playoffs and the quality of football that they were playing as mm. well. Very effective football. No, for sure. Yeah. No, he's a good guy all round. But let's talk about also the other team that make it through, which are the Pretoria Kalis. They now have the distinction of being able to share a stadium with Super Sport United and uh, Mamelodi Sundowns where they'll play uh, their games for the season. Sammy Troughton popping up again. I mean, there's a name, there's a coach, you know. <laughs> when last? When last? <laughs> now, Sammy and Sly are back in town. What do you hey, make of that? Hey, Sammy. Hey, Sammy's been around. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Sammy's been around. Yes. Uh, Fireman Sam, I suppose. Uh, you need a job done you, to some degree. Yes. You need a job done to some degree. Not He doesn't always get the job done, Sammy. In, in the, every kind of job. Le, yeah, le, certain le, jobs. Yeah, let's be honest. Maybe in the NFT. Yeah, yeah <laughs> maybe in the lower divisions he can get the job done. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Look, I think they've 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 got, because obviously if you remember, you know that name, mm. you know Pretoria Kelly and yeah. whatever, it carries some weight, especially some in, heritage, some heritage know, yeah. in, in in that region as well. And also also they've got Super Sport, they've got Mamelodi Sundowns, the reigning uh, top flight uh, champions as well. So you know if if you want to play in that space, you've got to do a better season in season season out. Whether Semi will continue to be the man, specifically that technical team, mm. you know, continue to be the, 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 the team that 
takes them all the way, even whatever ambitions that they that they have, right? You know, will remain to be seen. Let's see once the the season proper gets gets underway. But obviously, they've done an incredible job under the circumstances to have a league that was suspended mm. and then delayed in terms mm. of getting underway. I mean, there was a lot of you know the lower divisions. <laughs> I don't have to tell you the stories about the lower divisions. <laughs> There were some shenanigans uh -huh. throughout the year, even in terms of trying to get to eventually playing, but caught interdicts, you name it. You right. know, and eventually they got on the, the field. So if you take that, put that into context or take that into consideration, what both teams yeah. um, have done to, to secure uh, promotion is, is, is remarkable, actually. But John T, I guess the, the downside of all of this is that it's happening at such a hurried pace. Even Coach Motoneng was saying that I have to go into the new season with the guys that I have because there's not enough time to bring in personnel. There's not enough time to get them up to speed yeah. when things start literally in the next two, three weeks. Yeah, I mean, and it's a scrap, that Glad Africa Championship. You know, yeah. For, not for sissies, as they say, but yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a tough league to, to survive in, let alone to get in the top echelons of, so it's going to be tricky. Um, especially with the squad coming from the ABC Motsepe, and then there's the rules. I don't know. I think there's still the rules of the under twenty three players mm -hmm. that you have yeah, to field. Yeah. You don't know how many yeah. they had because those rules didn't apply in the ABC Motsepe league as much. And then it's it's difficult for them. It's going to be very difficult for them with the as you say the turnaround. It starts early December. Mm. Um, but I think adaptability is a theme of twenty twenty. Everybody's kind of had to adapt to this situation. Uh, there's been a very short turnover between season in the in the DSTV as it is now Premiership for, sure. for everyone overseas, and it's just a, something you have to adapt to. And I think good luck to those teams. Um, very interesting to hear Valile speak about that, that that how far that team has to travel yes. in the in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating that, and obviously Pretoria Cali's with the history. Sammy Troughton I know quite well. Yeah. yeah, he's he's had mixed success, but he's. He's very well known in 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 the in Chwane and and he had a spell at Tux, I think, and yeah. you know he's a he's a good coach. Um, so let's see how they do as well. But it should be very exciting, and and hopefully they can adapt fast, like let's everyone see. else has had. To. Let's <laughs> see. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, congratulations mm. to both those teams in terms of them now playing their trade in the Glad Africa Championship transfer news. We speak about goings and comings of coaches and players after this. <laughs> You're back on Monday Night Football on Soweto TV. Thank you so much for keeping up with us as we go into our last segment to discuss what's happening as far as casualties are concerned. like the coaches are leaving now. Patrick Osems won to get the boot. Dylan Kerr, who saved uh, Barocca from, you know, going into the playoffs. He's also been given the boots. But let's uh, maybe start at the beginning with Osems, because you know something about him, Stavage. More qualification work. At him. Owen. O Patrick or Sims. Locos Loe. Well, formerly of Black Leopards. Aye, man. That's not cool, guys. Cool, man. When you coach your mucha. Smooth. No, no, no. I don't know. Coach Loe. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, the new one. Hey, oh, Matimela. You want to speak about Because I think, I think, I think Patrick has has you know some coaching licenses mm -hmm. and that. Obviously, he's been he's been around the continent right. and whatever. Obviously, everyone always wants to land in Zanzi or whatever. But yeah. you know, what three games, um, no wins. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, consecutive defeats. I think they're all defeats. Yes. You know, um, so it's. It doesn't. It doesn't come as a surprise that you know, you know, sort of one foot out the door or gone already, whatever mm. the case may be. Mm. Um, but I think the case you're referring to is is with uh, with uh, Matsimela Toka. Yes. You know, uh, there's there's been a lot of issues with with Matsimela, especially with how he came to now become the Baroka head coach. Right. And it, it goes. It dates back to uh, a few seasons ago when <coughs> Matsimela was. Um, uh, Nirende's, uh, Nirende's assistant. assistant coach, right? And Nirende had gone back home uh, to Zambia mm. to, to to lay a family member, his mother, in fact, I think it was, yes. to rest. Mm. And Matsimela gave an interview with us, the media, and I think also it was a bit mischievous from the journalist who I think it was really no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, the, the journalist, <laughs> the journalist who asked the question yeah. about, do you want to take over? I mean. The head coach had just gone to bury his mother. It's yeah. not like the head coach was fired. Yes. You know, and I think at the time there were also work permit issues. Uh, yes. For, yes, for, yes. for Nirende as well. And Matsimela said, 
quite like bluntly that I'm available. You know? <laughs> I mean, you I'm here. You, Pick me. I mean, your 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 the man you are assisting has just gone home to bury his mom for a bereavement, <laughs> and he's coming back to yeah. the job. Yeah. He hasn't been fired. Yeah. You're supposed to be assisting this guy, yeah. and you get it's asked. It's a coup d'état, guys. You get asked, and yeah. mischievously so, I might yeah. add. Yeah. And you say I'm available. You know, already I think. Uh, I think it was no surprise that even when Dylan steps steps aside, yeah. suspended for whatever he said on TV, which I still say I think Dylan should have kept his mouth shut. You yeah. know, you've you've just secured almost. I think at the time he just needed a point to secure safety in mm. the top flight, mm. and he goes off shooting from the hip about interference. Leave me to do my job. Right. In in African football, especially, mm. and maybe even anywhere else in the world. Mm. You don't criticize your chairman on live TV mm. and live to tell the tale. Right. You don't. Yeah. Like, you know, so Dylan... <laughs> digging that, a grave. He, he was digging so a grave. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, so chairman was like, So chairman was like, ah, hi, my no brother. Ways. No, no ways. you can't. You but can't. Yeah. You know, so I think the writing was on the wall mm. there. But uh, Maden steps Matsimela. And I think there's <laughs> been questions about his qualifications right. as well. You know, right. um, you know, if Barocca are brave enough, they can. Because this... this this has been dominating, uh, you know, the social media space and mm, questions mm. being asked about by neutral fans mm. and Barocca fans yeah. about the coach's qualifications. Sure. You know, taking over from a Nirende or a, a Dylan K, whose reputation is, you know, uh, precedes itself. For sure. You know? So if Barocca are brave enough, let's, let's see Coach Matsimela's uh, uh, qualifications. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's got off, him, him and Coach Spaghetti have gotten off to a, to a good start. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in the in the three games that they've started, but I mean, there are twenty seven more games. No, for sure. Mm. Are you a, are you as much a stickler for the qualifications, Johnty? Or no, do you I think mean, as long as the results are forthcoming, who cares? Why do not leave five days? <laughs> I think condition. as long as the results are forthcoming, <laughs> yeah. nobody will care. Yeah, but um, you know, it's important. Club to have licensing. a qualified coach. Club, club licensing, club licensing yeah. comes yeah. up club again. Club licensing sure. that comes up again. It's important to be qualified. I yeah. Think I think, uh, yeah, it also doesn't speak well about a person when they say they're available. Whatever, however cheeky the journalist has been, whenever they, when they, if they say they're available for a job, when your coach is back home burying his mother, it's not <laughs> doesn't it's not speak on. well of a of a human being. But um, let's see how he does. And like you say, they've made a good start. Almost made it nine points out of nine. Last second goal, I think, in their last match it was mm -hmm. a one-one. But yeah, they, they've, they've started well. And that's clearly given management the confidence to say, okay, these fighters can do it. Let's see what they can do. Um, but you guys yeah, think that maybe Dylan Kerr will stay in that side of the world, though? Now, I mean, one, one coach has left. Uh, well, it's possible. Gone. Yeah, he's got history with them, so why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, he's got a, he's got a Black Leopard tattoo, I think, also. So. <laughs> He's got a Morocco tattoo. He's got a Morocco <laughs> tattoo and a Black Leopard tattoo. Yeah, but yeah. I think on, uh, on Coach Patrick... Uh. Um, I don't think the blame should only be on him. Sure. Only, you know, if I was not convinced with how Leopards strengthened their team. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I think they promoted eight boys um, and they brought back players like Nyundu mm -hmm. who have vanished into, you know. Obscurity. Yeah. Obscurity, you know. So I, I, I felt um, for me, in terms of beefing up the team, I was not really convinced. Um, mm. with, 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 with leopards, and this is not just any coach. Mm. He took Simba to um, the, the, the Champions League sure. um, uh, quarterfinals, mm. you know, and they were a force, you know. Um, even I think in DRC, he did very well there as well. So he's, he's one coach who, who knows his way around, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure if um, he was really um, gelling. Yes, um, with, with the conditions there, there at Leopards. So him living, I won't really he put all the blame at his door. At, at his door, yeah. you know. Um, but look, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, just like the situation at uh, at Barocca as well. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's, but also Coach Dylan, he found the team at number twelve, mm -hmm. and then the team was fighting relegation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, okay, he sa he saved them. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll see. But I think. This issue of qualification is very important. Sure. Um, <coughs> I will try and find you, but it's there in the CAF regulations of CAF Champions League and CAF uh, Confed. Mm. You don't sit on the bench if you don't have a CAF A license. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You don't sit. Yes. Yeah, so if you don't very, have a CAF A license, um, and for, as league, for a league as big as ours, mm. I mean, in terms of 
the stature of our league. Sure. Um, these are some of the things I was reading just this past weekend. This is something Sirame Ritswaka, when he was the TD, he wanted to introduce back in 2011. Mm. Mm. That if you want to caution the PSL, yes. you, must have, yes, you must have the SAFA Pro license, yes. which is the level three. Yes. You know? Um, and then you go down like that. Mm. You know? Mm. I mean, you can also have a D license. It takes five days to have the thing. Hmm. Hmm. I can also coach. Simple. But you, you know can't, you, but you can't be coaching in the PSL with a, a D license. <laughs> I agree. You must be coaching up my under level. That's what you need to be coaching. Aye. Let's talk quickly about um, our favorite club, TTM. Now, back in the news again with the speculation that Selo um, Nsoko, who's one of the shareholders, wants to kind of do when you, you know, a buyout and, and own the entire club. I know you're kind of working on something, Mazet, but, you know, is there smoke at this particular fire? Uh, you're putting me at a in a difficult situation because obviously I can't You're say, a wordsmith. You're going to navigate say, this. Say, I want to see. too much because the story, story is still coming only on Wednesday. But what I can tell you is that for now, mm. TTM is not for sale. Okay. You know? Um, you know, behind the scenes sounds like there was talk of not 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 them selling so soon three four months after they bought the top flight status sure. of Vidbas Vids. I think it's more like a you know potential change of ownership yes, or whatever from within from from within or whatever and I've said too much <laughs> yeah actually I read the story yesterday <laughs> on, yeah. the, uh, on the city press mm -hmm. yeah um, and they're saying what Adola is, is, is talking about um, because I think they're offering around 16 million rents uh, um, 24 million uh, no, no, no. Uh, for the, the rest of the, the shares. Yeah, the yeah, original the, story. Yeah, yeah. the 24 million is for a particular stake. Yeah, okay. But yeah. they're starting at 16 million rands yeah. yeah. for a particular stake. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because obviously the current owners want <laughs> these guys. I mean, they also pay 25 million yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but we know why they pay 25 million. Sure. Do you know why? Why? I'll tell you next week. <laughs> It was a gift. Can't do that. It was a gift. It was a yeah. gift. It was a through pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. B E E. Just go and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, because, and you are never, never going to find a PSL status uh, well, that, that cheap. No yeah, no, yeah no, 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 no. PSL sure. status goes for anything between 40 to 60 million. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, so, I think here yeah, we can all see that TTM is struggling. Yeah. You know? And it's just a matter of time before this thing blows up. Yeah. You know? So, they they need sign another player. They sign another player. So they, they, Opa they, so, so they need... Think about it now. Oh. Uh, because Opa and uh, Mulongane are going to take them to the, to the DRC. The DRC. Uh -huh. Then they're going to garnish them. And what if um, also some of the players who've been there are also going the same road? Sure. Butlem uh, Kwanazi is one that we... Butlem Kwanazi as well. Up. And if they're not satisfied, then they go the FIFA road. Yeah. It becomes worse for them. Mm. You know. So they need some financial muscle. Um, so maybe it's not a bad thing that they get uh, more shareholders uh, to come in and also to stabilize because from what I read, it's more than just the money that they're offering, mm -hmm. uh, but also they're talking about issues of accommodation, yes. you know, all those things. You know, um, <coughs> this potential uh, shareholder mm. is based in Pretoria, <coughs> yes. and Pretoria is not far from Limpopo. Limpopo. So he wants to bring the team a bit closer, to, a bit closer to things. I, 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 you see the movement again, the relocation. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a lot, eh? Uh, <laughs> There's yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. Jotty, what do you make? Word. I mean, TTM uh, always kind of in the, uh, in the right. headlines for, for the wrong reasons. But yeah. this, I don't know. I mean, if you're a fan looking at how it's been run so far, someone wants to come in and jack it up a bit. This is exciting. Not as exciting as initially thinking that your club was going to be well run. <laughs> From <laughs> the more I, re I read about TTM and yeah. see about them, is I wonder how the PSL allowed this sale to take place. Mm. What due process was followed in checking, you know, about about TTM as a as a viable business for the PSL? It mm. wasn't. <coughs> it doesn't seem like. It seems a bit of a rushed thing. I know they got their <laughs> they got their really good price because. <laughs> A certain club was sort of desperate to get out, or right. a certain party was, it seemed, at some point. But ugh, it's chaotic. And like you say, they could be Manisa's taking them to court. They could get in serious trouble. Um, and my eyes nearly popped out of my head when I saw Lawrence Malaudzi on the list of 
possible nomination for the PSL Executive Committee. And I, he didn't get on it, <laughs> but I was like, what? <laughs> this guy who's got this administrative mess that is TPM, no, however you want to call it, was now be, is now trying to get on the PSL Executive Committee. No. Um, and he didn't get on it, so fair enough. But uh, it's just a mess. It's a shambles. And I don't think the league, uh, in hindsight, I guess, you know, everyone's got the benefit of the hindsight, that they needed to follow. Even in these... Even in these times where well, I mean, I mean, TTM obviously <coughs> found a loophole, obviously mm, yeah. by you know, up, 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 you know, putting in their papers with mm. via family trust fund, uh, the the Black Family Trust. Mm. So you know, I mean, I've had several conversations with people who some say Exco is to blame, and you know, PSL Exco is to blame for this mm. whole thing. Some say, but how? Because the Exco go on what's on paper, what's yeah. in front of them, you know, and. Uh, <coughs> The, 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 dum the numbers were adding up, you know, because it, uh, it seemed like the family trust had enough money to make it happen. So from that point of view, because everything else sort of really, you know, kind of un unraveled a bit more soon after that. Even though in the lead up to that, we could see, because yeah. obviously the Vets players at the time were threatening to go on strike, you know, they're signing on fees and all of that. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. And we know their track record yeah. from the first division. <laughs> And the cases at FIFA. Yeah. So this is not new. No, when it comes for sure. to We should have expected it. A leopard can't change its spots. Gentlemen, we're out of time, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, this is how we wrap things up. Once again, having kind of touched on every point from the likes of Bafana Bafana to Banyana to what's happening in the league, which will now resume. I would like to thank my panel. Guys, you've been great as always. Remember, remember. All you have to do is uh, check us out on Twitter. We'll be turning around some of the best moments from the show tonight throughout the week. So for myself, Gamzambata, and the team that made this possible, until we meet again next week, take care.